Hey, everybody. We're going to start the webinar um, in, let's see, what is that? Uh, two to three minutes. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in your like little chat box, question box at the bottom right corner somewhere on your computer screen um, before, during, or after. And um, we're here with Kevin Wagstaff from Spectora, and we're going to hey. start um, in a few minutes. Hey, Kevin, can you hear me? Cool. Yep, I can hear you just fine. I'm going to go grab a computer charger because I don't want to blank out. And, uh... <laughs> Good, take your time. So um, everyone who's attending, we almost had uh, 100 uh, inspectors attend, uh, register for the webinar, so that's cool. Um, but if you can't make it, no big deal. Um, this is Natchi TV. We record all of our webinars, and then we put them on YouTube, and I'll, do, I'll be on Instagram and, and social media channels like Facebook and all that stuff. Um, what would I know about Instagram and Facebook? I'm not a millennial. And I guess that's what we're going to talk about um, today. And um, if you could, though, if you're on live right now and you can hear me and see me, that's fantastic. I can't hear you and I can't see you. Um, but if you could say hello, uh, just to make sure that all the technology is working on our end and on your end, that'd be fantastic. And um, we'll just start in a couple minutes. So if you have any questions, we're also on Facebook, uh, my Facebook channel, Internet Ben, um, Facebook, and uh, several folks are on and have joined us. That's fantastic. Like Chris, hello, Bob, Spencer, Tim, Diane, Eric, also, also have joined us on Facebook. Um, so if you can't find us and you're on Facebook, sometimes we do these Natchi TV webinars. Um, live and I'm gonna just type in oh that's that's almost correct let's see but that's it it's nachi.tv nachi.tv and it kind of looks like this so that's my fancy TV logo Love it. Um, and those two things sticking out of the top of the TV is what we non-millennials used to use to watch TV <laughs> they're called antennas um, <laughs> I remember those. I am on the <laughs> high, on the top end of millennials, so I don't claim. I claim it only when it's convenient. Uh, Bob from Maryland says hello um, on Facebook, and Marco on Go to Webinar. That's fantastic. You could say uh, hello or ask questions before, during, or after. If you have any questions for Kevin um, during the webinar. Um, I'll take a look at them and we'll make sure that your questions get attended to. Uh, again, if you are um, unable to stay for the entire time, that's fine. Uh, if the phone rings and you need to schedule an inspection and go, go. Um, we're recording all the uh, webinars on Natchi TV. So let's see. Awesome. So hi, everybody. I'm Ben Gramico from InterNatchi and uh, this is Natchi TV where we do free online webinars for everyone. It's open to everyone. You could be a member of InterNACHI or not. It doesn't matter. So you go to NACHI TV, N-A-C-H-I dot TV, and you click the blue buttons if you wanted to watch the most recent one, uh, the webinar we had just yesterday, or you want to register for a free one coming up. Um, we have a whole list of webinars coming up and a lot of presenters, a lot of great information. Um, what I would do is, um, if you can't attend all these live events, um, just register because we record all the Natchi TV, TV webinars and I'll send you the link to the video recording of the webinar that you're interested in. So uh, it doesn't cost anything to register. Just click register, give me your email and I'll send you a link to the video recording. And today we are honored with Kevin Wagstaff of Spectora. Um, Spectora is a pretty cool software. Um, I try to learn all the software uh, uh, that's out there, um, like Home Gauge, Home Inspector Pro, 3D, Easy, um, and I have Spectora on my iPhone right now, and I've done a few inspections with it. We also do um, videos. Um, I'll go through a house and use software and kind of share what I know on how uh, cool the software is and how I would use it just to share um, what one inspector um, can do and maybe um, I can provide some value to you. Speaking of value, um, Kevin, I don't know if you know this, but um, 
the Spectora team comes out to InterNACHI headquarters almost every month, and they devote their time to attend to our students. And uh, they spend a couple hours with them. They uh, share a meal with them. We feed our students here at InterNACHI headquarters at the House of Horrors, and they teach about marketing. And um, it's a really great, valuable uh, presentation. Uh, I've sat through it a few times, and um, Spectora is a really cool company. They were at uh, our recent convention um, at the Boulder Fairgrounds in Colorado, and um, we also have, speaking of conventions, I'm actually flying out to California today and signing a contract with um, a convention site. Uh, we're going to have the National Home Inspector Convention hosted by InterNACHI in Southern California in October 2020. And uh, I hope um, Spectora will be there as well. And um, so again, NACHI TV, N-A-C-H-I dot TV is where we have all of our free online webinars for home inspectors. And let's see if I can give um, Kevin <laughs> control of the webinar. So Kevin, um, I understand that uh, I'm not a millennial. So I had to look it up. Millennials uh, apparently um, were born around 19, mid 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, because they're actually not uh, people who are a thousand years old. That's what we call <laughs> uh, millennials, right? And right. Uh, they're people who actually uh, value things other than just email. Because aren't we all just on email? Can't you just email me your communications why do you have to uh market in different ways uh to me right i'm just on email i like email but i'm right. sure that there's different ways to communicate with different folks uh, of different generations and i think that's what you're going to talk to us about right absolutely um one thank you for having us on this is uh you know a topic that i think everyone it's no surprise that it's a, a hot button topic and something everyone needs to know about but you're absolutely right different ways of communicating different ways uh, millennials think. So we, we just want to get into the psyche and kind of get into the mind of that to be better home inspectors and get more business from it. Cool. So what can you show us today? All right, let's let's uh, let's dive into it. This is a slide deck that we modified a little bit um, that just talks through all the different areas um, that you need to be thinking about when you're marketing to millennial, not only home buyers, but real estate agents. Um, so I'm Kevin Wagstaff, like you said, we're gonna, we're gonna fly through this deck. Um, like Ben said, they're recording it. You can also get the slide deck um, from us directly, so fear not. <laughs> All right, so let's get rolling. All right, so goal, actionable marketing advice to better reach millennial agents, millennial home buyers. Hopefully you know why this is important if you haven't seen the stats. Um, the median age of today's home buyer and in the future is 36. Um, Gen X and Millennials. Um, you can look this up like Ben did if you want formal definitions and age ranges, but home buyers are getting younger. It's no surprise. And then agents, this is a key point to start is that no matter how old your agents are, keep in mind they're trying to appeal to Millennials because they know that's the next generation of their home buyers. So you're like minded with them if you're thinking about catering to Millennials. Um, keep this in mind that all millennials grew up in the information age, so their needs are different, their um, attention spans are much shorter, no surprise, uh, but they need information. And so think about this in terms of uh, everything I talk about, try to keep in mind that this is in person when you're presenting, shaking hands in the driveway, and then online when people see you and you're not doing anything. Uh, but they need information, they research everything first, and your online credibility it matters. I don't care what market you're in. There's at least one person a week or a month that comes across your stuff online. Um, millennials care about experiences. And, and Ben, you may laugh at this. Um, it's a fluffier thing. I even laugh at it, but so many millennials care about how something feels and how transparent a business is and how authentic they are. So the old school sales and tactics and ways, we'll get into a little bit of that. Um, and then convenience, no shocker. Millennials, some call lazy, some call efficient, uh, but everything's online. Um, and it's all about efficiency and how quick something can get done. And for those of you that work with um, certain high producing agents um, or millennial, they don't have to be millennials, but just agents, um, they really care about efficiency. Um, so you have to evaluate. I want everyone, whether you're experienced or brand new, to step back and say, okay, does my business cater to this? Am I saying online and in person 
what I think I'm saying. Um, I hate the, the term leaving money on the table, so let's skate to where the puck is going and pretend the puck has a bunch of money on it. That was my attempt at a bad metaphor. So what we'll cover, um, selling by not selling. It's a new concept maybe to some of you. Um, we don't necessarily even want the term sales or selling to be in your mind. Um, ways your online presence is losing you business, why you're not connecting the millennial agents, relationship building, getting touchy-feely with your buyers, putting your values out there, um, getting millennials to actually look at your reports, um, text messaging etiquette, and why millennials may not like your current booking process. Um, so this may feel like this. Don't worry. We can dive into any of these topics in depth. Um, we have a whole marketing team that is happy to just talk about these and dive deeper to help you get actionable uh, tips from it. So break this down, start small, and uh, think about these as habits. So we're going to breeze through a ton of stuff. I just want someone, I just want you guys to come away with one or two good habits that you're going to incorporate into your business. So don't get overwhelmed. Uh, don't get analysis paralysis or feel like you have to do all of this today. This is a stair step method um, and just habits to bake in. Uh, we know that we know who we are, respect Tora. Check out the podcast. Ben kicks some knowledge on there. Um, so let's fly through this. So millennials, um, I want you guys to really internalize this. That's why we really beat home these, these themes is that millennials verify things from multiple data points. So that's big when an, an agent that just gives your name or you and another inspector, that millennial may not just choose you because the agent says, oh yeah, go with Tim. He's, he's really great. They're going to go online and check things out. So they don't just hire a service professional because that's what their agent told them typically. Um, when I was an agent, I had a lot of millennial buyers and they went and did their research after I gave them sometimes the name of the guy that I liked the best and they still went and researched. So they researched extensively before buying a product or service. Just remember that. And so it's worth Googling your own name. I think everyone should Google their own name every month or so just to know what shows up. Uh, millennials are increasingly finding their own inspector. So I get push back on this, maybe one inspector a month will say, oh, are people really searching online? Uh, we just get the search volume directly from Google and Google tells us that a couple hundred people in most mid-sized cities a month are searching for a home inspector online. Um, so that tells you right there, if you can even get 10 of those a month, you're in good shape. Um, this may come as a shocker to some, but millennials don't always trust agent recommendations. Uh, my own brother and co-founder, Mike, didn't take my agent or didn't take my inspector recommendation when I helped him buy a house many years ago. He went on Yelp, he Googled it, he looked at Google reviews, um, and he looked at a website. So keep in mind that just because agents, um, you know, are giving your name, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to turn into as many jobs as buyers they're getting. Uh, any guesses here? Bing? No, nope, not Bing. Google, that's what everyone does. Everyone searches there. They have about 70% of all searches worldwide, 75% are on Google. Um, so if there's any question about where you should maybe be putting efforts or spending budget, uh, think Google. Um, occasionally we get questions on that. Um, this is an important snippet to just let you guys know that when people are ready to hire um, and when they're gathering information, they use search engines, not necessarily social media. And this is just broad stats, keep in mind, um, done by some of these statistic um, companies and marketing firms. So social media is for branding. Search engines is for when people actually want to hire someone. Um, so even if you're recommended, they're still gonna Google you and you want your search results to look like this. Um, this is a company in the Springs um, and they're fairly new. They're only a couple years old. So don't think this has to take 20 years for you to have this type of presence. But look, they have their website. They have a Facebook. They have a Yelp. Their Spectora profile. Their Better Business Bureau profile. And then they got a ton of reviews. So when someone searches you and they see that, that doesn't leave any room for them to not want to hire you. Uh, they even customize their image that shows up there. Um, so you want everything to be buttoned up because these impressions really do matter. If you guys are really into growing and getting every conversion and inspection you can get, you want this to be airtight and be very presentable. Um, if they just Google Denver Home Inspector, Home Inspector San Diego, there's gonna be ads, there's gonna be local results, there's organic. So this is to show you the difference of what millennials are seeing when they search. There's probably no surprise to all of you because you all Google and search things uh, on your own but just know that in every market you should know, or in your market, you should know who's running ads, 
who's in the local results and who's in the organic results and where you stand. Uh, so we don't want you guys relying on just agent referrals. That's part of the big point here. Um, and we don't want you to ignore how millennials seek out information because it's only happening at an increasing rate. Um, and don't think this can happen overnight. It takes a little bit of hard work. Um, but the results show that it's worth it. We've seen inspectors, businesses grow dramatically from paying attention to these uh, items. So you want to have a presence everywhere. Um, social media, again, we'll dive into this a little more, but just pick one or two and try to be consistent and be good at those. Um, there's also directories um, that you can list yourself on, but have a plan and start small. And uh, we help inspectors every day with crafting these small bite-sized plans. And it just takes putting things into your schedule for five or 10 minutes a week to start. Um, so no shocker, they're gonna vet you by your online presence. So again, own your search results page, have something on your website for agents, because when agents are researching you, so say you go do an agent presentation, a couple of those agents, you can, and I've been in these offices and I've, I've lived this, some of those agents are gonna go to your website and look you up. And so if you have a tab on your site for agents, that's great. Have something that they can feel is for them and customized for them. Um, and bonus points if you create custom landing pages for certain bigger offices with the, the big producers, but you want somewhere for them to land. You don't want your website to look like that. Um, you don't want it to look like that. Don't ignore mobile. Everyone today, if you have a website, please look at it on your phone and tap through it. Um, you might be surprised what you see. Um, I think we at Spectora can even tend to forget sometimes people are doing everything on their phones. So everything should be viewed from that lens of mobile first. Uh, you don't want the site to look like that. Um, you want it to be modern, clean, um, and, and good design principles. This is what millennials tend to gravitate towards is cleanliness. So I know the old school model is clutter your site, jam it full of information. You, anytime you have long paragraphs, that makes a millennial hit the back button. Um, and not even a millennial, I would say um, anyone nowadays with attention spans, right? And so I think you, you want to have things be clean and modern and open because that's the feel that tends to keep people relaxed and tends to keep millennials in particular relaxed. Um, use video. Um, you know, Ben is the shining example of how powerful video is. I think um, if there's anyone's lead to take, it's his with utilizing video and getting your face out there. Um, and I'm sure he can attest to this, that it does get easier. It's like a muscle you have to build, but start establishing trust with videos because to millennials, it's huge to have that connection when you see someone's face and you see their demeanor. Um, and all of you are very trustworthy and uh, and can get better at presenting online. I still feel weird every time I do it, but I think the more you do it, the, the more you'll see the results. Hey, um, hey articles. Yeah. What, what about um, video testimonials? What Everyone does a selfie nowadays. What about me <laughs> as a home inspector at the end of the day, at the end of the inspection, handing over my camera and say, hey, why don't you say something nice about me? Huge. And, and if especially, yeah, I love this idea, Ben. That's a great one, especially if it is a millennial, a tech savvy person. I mean, it could be anybody that seems savvy and you kind of just got to get a feel for it um, or someone you build rapport with. It's a light way to kind of end the inspection to commemorate maybe them buying a new house if the inspection particularly went well. Lots of creative ways you can do this and you're speaking their language. Just remember, uh, certain agents love this. Uh, there's a certain inspector up in Canada that, I mean, he's like the selfie king with his agents and you think they like that promotion? They love it because it's, it's their face in another place. Thanks for that. Um, articles to establish trust. Again, get in the mindset that it's not transactional. It's not, oh, I found an inspector, cool. Sometimes when they're in a crunch, yes, but millennials like to browse and see, okay, is there information that I can learn from? Uh, is there something that can prepare me for the inspection? So I think there's, we have a set of about five articles that every inspector should have on their site just to set expectations for buyers and agents before the inspection. Uh, and you want that on your site. So if your site is bare and doesn't have any content, um, let's figure out a plan to at least get you some base content on there because that's a trust signal. Mobile friendly, we're gonna beat that to death, but it needs to look good on phone. Um, you want it to be clean, you want font sizing, you want tap targets, uh, you want menus to slide in and content to be clean. Because um, when people see that, they studies show they intrinsically feel better about your brand. Um, same website, different screen sizes, 
if you have a dated logo, um, get that updated. I think if it's clip art looking, you will be judged for that. Um, Internachi makes your logos for free and they are great. There's no Oops. reason to not do this. So <laughs> it, I look at, I see a logo every day and I, I just feel like you, you can't see the impact or feel it, but I think all of you can know, put yourself in those shoes when you see a brand with a dated website, dated logo, not updated content, you question their, um, the credibility. Yeah. And for real estate agents, I mean, they're all, they, they're really focused. If you're working with real estate agents, they're really focused on their appearance, first impressions, their professionalism, their look, and you know, they can see a crappy logo from 20 feet away. They care about details. They may not, they're not going to tell you, you just won't hear from an agent for months. And then you kind of wonder you're too busy and you wonder why, but this is the slippage I think that can happen when everyone's in like this pretty fruitful market. Um, that could prevent you from getting to the next level. If you're a single guy that wants to do 30 or if you're a multi that wants to get to five or 10 inspectors, you have to mind the details because agents are looking at them and they notice. So get the logo done. I, it's, I can't beat that enough. Um, social proof. This is a kind of a buzzword in marketing, but I want everyone to understand that social proof is just seeing reviews and seeing what other people say. So those testimonials, those reviews, they matter. I, if we did a show of hands, I bet not many people have been on their neighborhoods next door and typed in in home inspector just to see what comes up because there's people on there asking all the time. And so you can create an account on there. You can create a business account. Um, we'll have to look at the rules and restrictions of what you can do, but you've got to have a presence there. Uh, Yelp, Facebook, YouTube, Google reviews. Um, if there's any question, Google reviews um, is probably one of the most important along with Yelp because it tends to rank higher in search results in most cities. Um, so if you have a place to start with reviews, do Google reviews because it's Google and they're, they, they run everything. <laughs> Quick so, stat. Can, can, yeah. Just to interrupt. Angela just asked that. So it, you're saying it's, it, um, she's asking about the differences between Facebook reviews, Google and Yelp. You're saying Google. Great question. So very common. So Google reviews, we want to prioritize that because it is part of their algorithm to rank you higher when someone searches Home Inspector Austin or Home Inspector Detroit. Um, so you, you've got to play their game first. I think primarily you got to build up those Google reviews because it, it is a ranking factor. They have told us that. Um, secondly, I say Yelp, even though we can probably all collectively agree that we don't um, necessarily feel great about Yelp or some of their business practices, but if they rank first or second in your city, the, their listings page that show you know 10 home inspectors on Yelp, then Google sees that. And so you need to have a presence there. So it's kind of like you want to be everywhere that ranks high. And so that's why Yelp is a priority because Google is crawling their site all the time. And so you want to be high up on Yelp too, even if you don't pay them um, for leads or what, you know, whatever they're selling. So, uh, and then Facebook, that is more of a, social proof thing when people come across you on Facebook or if you're running Facebook ads, maybe then you want to do a little more Facebook reviews um, to get those up. But um, in turn, that won't help you in Google's search rankings uh, because Facebook's behind a login. Good question. Uh, you're behind the game if you're not asking for reviews. And so this goes from the new inspector. We coach new inspectors. We say, you know, in the class up at Nachi, we say, hey, you're going to be, un you're, you're not going to feel good. You're going to feel insecure. You're going to feel like you did a crappy job on your first inspection. Um, but if the person feels good and you're talking to them and, and articulating, you know, the general um, condition of the home and they seem to be feeling good, ask for a review because they don't know any better. They, they, they're scared. They're scared that they're buying a new house and there's things wrong with it. They're not thinking about the fact that you might be a brand new inspector or if you have 10 jobs that week. Um, mention it to people because when you say it to them verbally, it's something strikes in their head to where when you send that follow-up email, they're gonna they're much more likely to leave you a review. Uh, so don't just assume they're gonna happen. There's so many markets where if you guys search, I guarantee there's gonna be someone with less than 10 reviews in your market. That means it's ripe for the taking. And so if you can get to 5, 10, 20, 30, um, you can really overtake some established companies. Um, I'm shocked. You know, you look at Wynn, it's like that's a that's a franchise. They should have a process in place and everyone should have hundreds of reviews, but they don't. So I think uh, you need to bake this into your process is the bottom line. Um, you can't ignore bad reviews. Um, you got to respond to them, got to address them. 
And again, not relying on agent recommendations, reviews is the key to getting there because if you get those reviews, people go online and they just trust that. And so that this is a key to having a good balance between agent referrals and direct customer business. Uh, make them a priority, have them in multiple places. Uh, anywhere you have a profile and they have reviews, it still behooves you to get a couple um, and you can sprinkle this in over time. Mention it on site, like I said, increases your chances greatly. I don't have hard numbers for you. Um, that's more of anecdotal, um, but you have to believe when someone mentions something to you and you confirm that you're going to do it, uh, you get the email, you're more likely to do it. Um, ask multiple times. This is the cadence we have found to work well and increase reviews by quite a bit. Um, and by quite a bit, we've had inspectors go from five or 10 reviews into the hundreds, up in a hundred plus um, in a span of a couple months, six months, a year. And this is asking for a review four hours, four days, 16 days after separately. Um, because remember, home buyer's perspective, they're flustered, they're busy. Um, they probably didn't see your first email or they were busy doing something else. That second and third one is when they tend to respond and do it. Uh, link directly to the reviews page. So if any of you are just saying, hey, uh, find me on Yelp, find me on Google and leave a review, they're not gonna do it because um, people are too busy and you need to make it easy for them. So provide them the link that automatically pops up the little box that says, leave a review for Big Ben Home Inspections, five stars, and you want them to land right on that page. And remember, they're probably tapping on it from a mobile phone while driving their kids to Taekwondo practice. Um, and then once you get a couple reviews, put them on your website. I think this is, this is a, a big area that most inspectors don't do. I've seen inspectors with 50 five-star Google reviews they don't mention on their website. Have to mention it there, it's social proof, it's a powerful signal. Uh, here's an example, Kurt Hose out of uh, Medina, Ohio. See what, he's probably got over 200 now, but he mentions it in, in big, bold letters on the front of his site. Um, There's just some stats to say, of course, reviews have an impact. Um, if you fall below 5.0, it's not the end of the world. People on average will still engage with a business if it's over 3.3, which surprised me, but um, that's good news if you for everybody because we're all going to get a bad review. This is interesting um, and very great for our market. And this is another reason to care about reviews if you already aren't bought in or don't believe me. Um, they're not, they don't just help you rank higher, but people are willing to pay more if they're assured they'll have a better experience. And that just makes sense, right? Like we've all paid a premium price for something. Um, and I think if you're assured that you're going to have a better experience, guess what? You just added more revenue for your company because you're delivering a good experience. Uh, case study mentioned Kurt. He had about 90 reviews uh, a year before and six when he first started. He was actually in the Nachi class two years ago. So he is a shining example of the education, went out to InterNACHI, learned what he needed to learn and just hit the ground running. And now he's hiring his third inspector. Um, so I love success stories like that, where he was in the class, didn't have that big of a construction or housing background, but he knew how to market and do pay-per-click and get reviews. And he just asked, he asked more. Um, so this is talking about value now. So how uh, there's so many of you, I'm sure that have the mindset, if I'm going to an agent, I want to provide some value to them before they send me business. If, if not, you want to start framing your mind to say, how do I give value to someone before I expect a referral back? Because um, millennials, agents especially, want to get that value or see something first. So what are you giving agents in your presentations? Um, and you got to speak to them in the, in the language they want. So we've all done this um, or we've all heard of inspectors. We typically interview inspectors when they, um, when they go out of the business and we say, well, what did you do? And they said, I just went to offices and handed out my business cards uh, and flyers. Guess what? They go in the trash. Um, bowl of candy. I know uh, some people in the industry swear by it. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm saying it's, um, it's you want to add a personal touch if you're going to do that. So if you're going to go drop off a bowl of candy, you want to be taking some time to sit down with people and shaking hands and making that connection. Um, you don't just ask agents to use you because you're in business great. Um, and your presentation should not be about you. You should be listening and you should be asking questions. Um, so we're not saying bring a fruit bouquet, but we're saying to be unique and creative because millennials like personalization. So, um, you know, if you can do something that's a little higher quality and cost a little more, um, I'd say do that and keep things healthy. Uh, millennials and the young at heart, even, um, you know, the average agent's a 55 year old woman. 
Um, maybe they don't want a Hershey's bar that was made 20 years ago. So just think about how to how to do things in a different way and be unique, um, because I think our our industry sometimes can have the herd mentality. But I want you guys to all find your special, unique way to connect, um, because millennials will reward you with business. Um, <laughs> let's get back to the millennial being lazy thing or efficient. Tell them how you're going to make their life easier off the bat. I think that that you know. You mentioned antennas earlier, Ben. That raises the the antennas of millennial agents when you say, "Here's how I'm going to get you 30 minutes back in your day." Um, and so, if you have technology or tools or anything in your reports that help them do that, mention that right away um, and give them useful information because uh, you know CE agents have to do it. And so, if you can offer CE, um, I think everyone should look into that to see if you can get them a CE credit while you're there because uh, that gets the audience there. Um, I tell everyone to get the agent's contact info. Don't just hand out cards and walk out. You want to send a follow-up. So I think the more cards you can get, um, then you can keep delivering value to them and only sending emails or calling when you have value to deliver, um, such as a newsletter. I think everyone should be sending a good email newsletter. Um, even though not all emails get viewed, we have stats. Um, you know, If you're interested in email marketing, let us know because we do have a good amount of data um, to show open rates, click-through rates on emails to agents. Uh, something like the Repair Request Builder um, or something that makes their life easier, that's a good idea to promote and tell millennials of, hey, I know the, re I know the repair addendum or your inspection objection is a hassle to do. I'm going to give you 15 minutes back in your day. That just sounds good. Um, so that they want to see that value. Okay, so shifting to millennial buyers now. So they want to see value too before they purchase anything. So what does your website show them? Um, and you won't know the business you're losing if your website is fairly sparse or it doesn't deliver value. Um, and so just be mindful that you just won't hear from those buyers. Um, and then don't try to automate your content on your website. Um, make it high quality. So writing sucks. Who likes writing? No, nobody. Um, but Find someone that either can write for you or get comfortable writing a few paragraphs on common home inspection findings, uh, HVAC maintenance, pretty much anything you're knowledgeable about, you could probably write a paragraph or two about it. So this is this ties in with the whole millennials like to research. They like to see that you have an active blog, that you're giving value. So I think just this alone, if you get to a site and you see all these blog posts recently published, that to a millennial, that signifies value, that signifies credibility. Not to mention to agents, this is a very uh, you know good marketing strategy to make articles for them, but that's another topic. Helpful videos, again, we talked about videos. If you can be super helpful to a millennial before they even hire you in terms of doing a quick video of home maintenance tips or telling them what to expect from a home inspection or just calming them down, you're winning their trust. And remember, millennials care about trust. They care about loyalty. So remember that you're you're building, if you're wanting to truly build a brand, I think you have to get your face out there and you have to have that impact because that's what spreads. Uh, test running ads. I think that's, um, you know, millennials, when they're actually ready to hire someone and not just millennials, but everybody, they will click on ads. I think cl uh, click through rate on ads are, you know, one to 2% but they go up when someone's immediately ready to hire. So test with ads, millennials still click on them and use them um, and link to information. Sometimes you don't have to just link to your homepage or a conversion page. Sometimes you can link to what to expect from your home inspection. Uh, you should have FAQs. Everyone, I can give you guys the, the, the 10 things people commonly ask or people commonly Google, um, but that's a lot of what we base our content on is what are people typing into Google? What are they curious about with home inspections? We want you to answer that on your website because if they're thinking it and typing into Google, chances are some of your buyers are and we want them to find it on your site because that just makes you that much more credible. Uh, real estate market updates. These are easy to pull data from Zillow or Redfin or anywhere. Um, in the example of tons of good content, what to look for, preparing tools, list of homeowner resources, this is the kind of stuff that gets you to rank number one. Uh, and we've seen it over and over. Um, and so it's a, it's a tested formula. FAQs, boom, answering so many good questions and it's not cluttering up the page because those expand when you click on them. Um, and Pac West is, he goes in hard on SEO and digital marketing. Um, a, great, a great person to consult or talk to to see 
how it's affected his business. Um, going into agent offices, I personally worked for a remote brokerage, so there was no office. We did a sales meeting once a month. So if you're going in to do a presentation, and there was a thousand agents in Denver that worked for this brokerage that I worked for, keep in mind, agent presentations may not always work because they're not there. Um, <laughs> yeah, we throw that in. Uh, work from home real estate jobs, everyone's trying to find one of those. So don't assume you're reaching all agents in an office. You got to seek out remote agencies and find ways to reach them through email, through social media, through online presence. That's why all this online stuff is so important because these remote agencies are popping up by the day. Um, you don't want to send generic emails to a whole email list. Um, that's called spam. Um, so you want to personalize stuff. And then on social media, if you're going to start connecting and, and putting yourself out there in front of these agents on social media, please don't do it if you're going to be lazy or automated. If you're going to just send out the same post um, or have a basic salesy post, just don't do it at all because it looks worse and it actually hurts you in Facebook's algorithm if you put out posts that people don't engage with or share or comment on. So just remember you're aiming for engagement on social media. Um, everyone should follow every agent in their market on social media. I don't get why every home inspector doesn't do this. Um, we, we, we bang the table on this because um, agents live on social. So if you every so if you go on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, Google, just literally type in Home Inspector your city, and then just follow every account and start engaging with them. Um, and it takes it only takes five to ten minutes while you're sipping your coffee or winding down for the night. Um, and then if you're going to do an email campaign, please make it full of good information. Um, qu remember quality over quantity because millennials and agents in general hate canned um, low effort stuff. It's obvious to everybody. It's obvious to you when you see it as a consumer. So seek out good information or pay someone to do it well and it will pay dividends. All right, that's the first section. How am I doing on time, Ben? Uh, you're doing great. Um, I think we're scheduled for 45 minutes. So another 10, 15 minutes or so. Perfect. That'd be fantastic. I'm going to breeze through the fluffy part. Millennials yeah. basically think about things as experiences. They don't buy products. They, they buy an experience. So how you're making them feel uh, every step of the way from the first contact to when you send them the report and follow up with them, they, they take note of that and they care. So don't treat this business as transactional churning through people because that's not what grows your brand via word of mouth and reviews. You want to treat every person as an experience. Um, so it starts with your website, your outreach, examine every detail know what emails are going out so you can talk about them. The lawn chair is there because one of our companies gets branded lawn chairs and brings them to every inspection because at a vacant house, guess what? There's nowhere to sit. That's an experience. Um, Lanos value their feelings, their touchy feely, how they feel matters. Um, <laughs> shout out Anchorman. Most people won't remember what you said about the inspection or the technical knowledge, but they're going to remember how they, how you made them feel. I want you guys to really internalize that. Like this is a touchy feely customer service business. They don't care what the plumbing pipe material was. They just want to feel assured that they're going to be able to take care of this stuff. Um, and this leads to more reviews and better referrals. Uh, so if someone looks uncomfortable, please address it on site. Ask them. Ask them, hey, what are you thinking? Tell me Tell me what you're thinking. I know you have 100 other things to check. I see your templates. Um, but remember that emotional intelligence comes in handy. Um, and then an alarmist. No one wants to be the alarmist inspector. No one wants to be the soft inspector. So you want to be somewhere in the middle. Um, so you want to set expectations. I think articles and videos are great for that. Um, and then validate their feelings on site. Put defects into context. Uh, there's not enough training on this part in the business, but your communication is a muscle you have to build with putting things into context because agents, they're watching that. They watch how you communicate with their buyers and you want it to be good. You want it to be honest and you want it to be um, in context. So work on your soft skills in the mirror. Work on it with your wife. Work on it with your husband. Um, there's ways to do it. Agents have feelings too. They're very aware. They're watching. Um, you know, you got to mind them on site. And again, treat them as an, their experience um, seriously because they care about having a consistent experience with your company. Um, so details of your thermal camera, right on the, most buyers don't care. They care about the feelings and emotions that go in. So um, letting your clients and agents know that you speak their language goes a long way. Um, and again, putting things into context. 
Uh, so millennials want to do business with like-minded people. Um, I can talk deeply about this from like an agent perspective and a home buyer. Um, people are willing to spend with a company that aligns with their values. So if you support a cause, put it on your website, talk about it, um, put it out there. Um, Whole Foods is a great example, Whole Paycheck, but they put their values out there and people that resonates with people. Same with Tom's shoes. So show your personality, tell people why you became home inspector, talk about this um, with your buyers, with your agents, and then show why it's important to you. That helps. I think people do care um, about the feeling behind it. That's the difference with millennials. Um, and I'll even say agents as a whole is, yeah, they care about why you're in business and why you're doing what you do. They, they As much as they say they just want a good inspection, branding and marketing matters. So you got to show awareness um, of trends like millennial home buyers might be more strapped for cash. They might be putting less down on homes because they don't have the savings. So you can mention that as you're talking and saying like, hey, I know, I know the down payment took a big chunk out of you. This is a quick 20 minute fix at Home Depot or however you word it. You're showing awareness of current trends and what they're going through. They want to see personality. You guys uh, are not in the business of just inspecting homes. You're in the customer service business. You're in the personality business. Um, so show some personality. Um, on social, this this company, again, another student of Internachi's in-person classes two years ago, but they, they do really well on social personalizing stuff like this. Simplicity. This is a big one. I'm glad we were able to get to this. Um, overly complex pricing, overly complex processes are going to turn millennials away, hands down. Um, I, who's, who's reading that? Nobody. Um, so if you have hidden charges or complicated pricing, reevaluate it because someone's going to look at that and, and really question if they want to use you. Um, transparent pricing, packages. This is the trend. We're seeing multis go to this. It's easy to understand. I look at that and I can scan down a column. Psychology says most people pick the one in the middle, so price it accordingly. Um, if you need help with that, we have lots of studies that we um, you know, have seen to help kind of do that. Um, be authentic. Relationships with agents must feel genuine. So when you're talking to them, you get to know them. Like actually ask questions about them, about their business, about their family. Um, and you don't want to be salesy with them because that's a big turnoff to millennials. They, you could be the best inspector on the planet and they may not use you if they feel like you kind of came on with a sales pitch. Um, don't try to scale relationship building. We all know this. It's common sense, but I see it happen where people try to mass relationship build. It's got to be, it's got to be authentic. It's got to be one to one. Or when you're doing presentations, um, you know, you got to connect with everybody in the room. If you can get coffee with agents, um, especially the young millennial agents that are up and coming, sometimes that five dollar, you know, thirty minute coffee can lead to twenty, thirty, fifty, hundred deals over the years. Um, and be upfront and tell them tell them why you charge what you charge and why you're the best, and they'll they'll really appreciate that. Make this a part of your life. I think everyone can do better at any industry of talking about what they do out in public at your kid's soccer game, at your workout class, um, you know, local meetings, anything. You got to get out there and make relationship building part of your life to really grow your business to that special level. Social media can be a powerful tool. Again, it's got to be authentic. Uh, here's the guy I talked about, Jimmy Torres. Um, you know, he's... He, He's kind of a nut in some ways, but he's he's great on social media. Look at this. This is social media gold. And you and he's and I, I track some of his stuff. Agents are sharing this stuff. All of their buyers and sellers are seeing it. Um, he gets these signs. He puts effort into it and he goes in hard on it. I'm not saying you gotta be him. I'm saying you need to pick what you're good at and really make it quality. Uh, don't automate social media. It's lazy, it's obvious, it doesn't work. Um, and then no selling on social media, unless you're running ads, that's a, a middle ground area, but make show personality on it. And like, think about what you engage with on social media and make yours that good. Uh, make this a scheduled habit, put time, put schedule on your calendar to think about what you're going to post in five to 10 minutes. Like I said, build this into your calendar and schedule because millennials see it, they care and they'll reward you. Recommendations. Um, Again, don't view it as a single transaction. Um, convenience, final section, we'll breeze through this. Um, you, get, you gotta have everything be convenient and efficient and mobile. So does, does this look familiar? They're probably all texting each other, even though it's a stock photo, but millennials are always on their phones. So agents are always on their phones. Um, so you've, this goes from the follow-up emails. Well, we'll go in order here. But don't expect just phone calls to book you business. You've got to have an online scheduler for one. Everyone should have online scheduling. 
Um, don't ask for a phone call when someone texts or emails you back. Um, talk to them in the communication in the way they want to communicate. Um, and when someone texts you, text them back. I, some of you may not want to do text. Um, it's a business decision. Um, but quick story, I hired a sprinkler guy the other day because he responded to my uh, Yelp inquiry and said, hey, just shoot me a quick text for details. I did it right away. He's coming out Saturday. Um, that's just a quick example of how millennials can react to you communicating the way that they want to communicate. Uh, make it easy, call to action buttons. You see here, he's got a tap to call at the top. He's got to schedule now. He's got to get a quote. Three options. Um, if you're not allowing online scheduling, you're missing the boat. Um, millennials will do anything to avoid a phone call or filling out a contact form. You need to have a way for them just to do it for the ones that are just ready to go. Uh, online scheduler, great. It needs to be mobile friendly. Um, some of your schedulers might not be. We get a lot of sites that we rebuild where the online scheduler is not mobile friendly. Make sure to do that. Um, you got to you got to communicate via text. Um, even if you're sending automated texts, um, confirming the inspection, sending the report via text, um, because 65% worldwide of views online are on mobile or tablet. So I, I, that, I can't say it enough. That stat alone says you need to be sending text automated text messages. Um, assume, don't assume your voicemails get heard and don't assume your emails get read. Um, so answer via text or have someone on your staff do it. You just need to be utilizing text in this generation, in this day and age. Um, if you have a text um, you know, link on your site for them to text you, great. I think that's very millennial friendly. Um, and then send reminders, follow-ups, report, and everything else. It's just expected. Um, you know, If your dentist does it, you, you should be doing it. And I love my dentist uh, text confirmations. So millennials expect everything online. Uh, don't insist on cash. I know some you know, in our industry, we want cash, we prefer it. Um, but if you push too hard, sometimes people just use someone else because uh, they don't have checks or cash. Millennials just don't carry that stuff. Allow online payment. Um, it'll make your life easier. We, t we work so many big multis that they, they wake up and they are paid and the agreement's signed. There's comfort in that. Uh, nothing with paper. Don't send just a PDF for the report. Nobody wants to deal with that. Um, get your agreements online. This is what it's like looking at a PDF report on mobile. Um, you got to pinch and zoom. And, and if you just send a PDF, you're probably upsetting people. That's the feedback I've gotten from so many agents, inspectors, buyers over the years. Um, and you got to scroll and pan. Just evaluate how you're sending the report. I'm not saying you got to use us. I'm saying you just need to do what your customers and agents are wanting. Um, if anyone's still printing on site, um, can't tell you what's best for your business, but I don't think any buyers or agents, um, I think it's unrealistic expectation nowadays. Mobile friendly report, web-based. Um, this is cool. This is something millennial buyers love. We get emails every day from agents and buyers that love the experience and it makes them feel better about the inspection. So uh, you got to have something that's modern and clean. How am I on time, Ben? Awesome. It's, it's, um, uh, you're good. If you want to wrap up, that'd be cool. fantastic. Yeah, let me breeze through this. Um, Lanos are busy multitasking. Make things easy. Um, large blocks of text. Don't overwhelm with too much information. Be concise and promote time-saving features. Um, and so this is not... If I'm a millennial and I'm buying a house, if I take myself out of Spector completely and I look at this, that doesn't save me time or make me feel good. It makes me feel stressed out and cluttered. And then I just ask my agent, say, hey, can you like make sense of this for me? And then the agent's pissed off at you. So evaluate your experience end to end, um, you know. And and this is just one. This is just, there's other web-based reports out there. This is what ours happens to look like. Um, it's part of the experience. Millennials are using Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram. They want things that look like that. Um, summaries are great. Have a summary that uh, filters your report. This is part of the overall experience. Um, and millennials expect technology. So if you're not if you're not staying up to date with these trends and these ways of delivering your report and communicating, you're literally getting passed up by these companies that are doubling down on this type of stuff because um, you know from the new guy that graduates from Internachi school to the 30 inspector multis, I'm hearing people really embracing these trends and getting ahead of it. So um, you got to jump on board. Don't get stuck in your ways. Keep up with new tech and trends. Keep innovating and. Uh, yeah, I can't believe I got through that in 45 minutes, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
that was a, a really nice presentation. I know that you uh, um, put a hose to our mouth, but um, I really appreciate all the information. I really liked um, a couple of the things about um, that social media is really for your branding. And if you want uh, somebody to look for you, to hire you, um, that's on the search engines. And um, I like that, uh, learning that distinction. And also given value. I used to, uh, we used to bring um, Little Peach candy all wrapped up and with a little bow and all that stuff um, to every home inspection. And sometimes we just threw it into the car if the agent's window was down. Um, <laughs> Beautiful. Yep. And um, also providing CE. Um, you know, I've never Great. been really much of a fan of a home inspector um, being an instructor. I think a home inspectors should just inspect. But if you wanted to um, provide CE, you know, InterNACHI has uh, free online CE courses. And in a couple of months, I think we're announcing a new uh, video-based real estate CE course. So uh, reach out to InterNACHI for that. You can just send a link um, for accredited free uh, CE for your real estate agents that you work with. Oh, and um, so many other things. Uh, that was really great. That's a t ton of information. So if somebody wanted to uh, grab more information from you, um, or talk to you more, um, it's basically spectora.com, right? Spectora.com, we have a little tiny green chat bubble at the bottom right, and I and we use that because we have a marketing team of a couple people, and so depending on what you need, we can get you to the right person and schedule a call or drill into any of these areas that you want to get busy on and kind of um, start making a difference. So, um, yeah, awesome. and they, can grab, they can grab me at any time too. Um, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, so thanks everybody for coming. Um, and uh, if you wanna um, mm -hmm. see the video recording of this, or if you're watching it now, uh, you're probably watching it on um, YouTube right now. So we record every Nachi TV webinar, so you can watch it later. Um, if you wanted to register for the next webinar, go to nachi.tv, Nachi TV, and click the blue button to register for the next free webinar. Kevin, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate um, everything that you do for the home inspection industry. And uh, um, there is special offers that you have for our members. And um, anybody who wants a special offer, uh, a Spectora uh, exclusive discount or a special offer from Spectora about um, their software or their website design, because they do websites too. And you should see the back end stuff of their software. Um, just email me or Kevin at Spectora and uh, we'll give you that information. Yeah, Kevin. We Yep, we've got deals for every type of um, you know software subscription, but I'm gonna do something on the spot. Mike's gonna kill me, but we're gonna do another hundred dollars off for anything on the marketing side that we talked about. Um, a free hundred dollar credit for whether it's SEO, PPC, email, um, websites um, for anyone that is listening or seeing this. So just mention it to Ben. Um, he'll send cool. you to me, and then we'll make it work. Thank you so much, Kevin. Again, appreciate it. It's a real honor, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Thanks, Ben. Love what you're doing. Bye, I appreciate everybody. it. Bye, everybody. See ya.